Hey everyone, it's me, Rylan. Um, so it is October 21st, 2019 at 1.55 p.m. Um, crooked. All right, so I hate it when YouTubers say this. I really do. Like, this is a video that, like, I'm really nervous to make and, like, I may not post it. But literally, this is a video that I am scared to talk about, and I don't know that I'm gonna post it. Uh, Cause yeah, I've 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 wanted to talk about this aspect of my mental health for a very long time, but there's a couple things that have stopped me. Um, number one being, whose business is this besides my own? Why would I? Why would I share this with the world? Um, and then shame, judgment, and stigma. Uh, I feel shame for this. Uh, I feel that I'm going to be judged for this. And I'm going to be judged for this because of the stigma. So uh, depending as what I wrote as the title or not, this is about me not being able to work um, because of my mental illness. So for those of you that do not watch my channel, again, hi, I'm Rylan. Um, I go by he, him pronouns, so if I happen to be talking about myself, talking about me. Um, and yeah, if you're not familiar with me, I struggle with a lot of mental illness. Um, I think I'm at nine, nine or 10 different mental illness. And they're all, um, yeah, they're all, they're all like professionally diagnosed. I've, I've, I'm not self-diagnosing any of my stuff. I, um, yeah, I guess I can just start right in and say a little bit of background about me is I, uh, I'm older and I look and I've been in therapy uh, since I was a sophomore in high school and um, you know kind of slowly over time uh, the diagnoses had just like piled up and piled up um, and now I'm at the point where yeah I, I have I know eight for sure but I might be forgetting a couple um, and I'll just throw out a few so it doesn't seem like I'm just fucking lying and we can get some, uh, you know, some groundwork as to, as to why I'm unable to work due to some of these illnesses that I have. So let's be vulnerable as fuck and count, shall we kids? Here we go. I have bipolar disorder, type one. Uh, borderline personality disorder. Um, so that's a mood disorder and a personality disorder. Um, I, Jesus Christ. I, um, uh, I have ADHD. I have eating disorder, not otherwise specified. I have PTSD. I have social anxiety. I have generalized anxiety, um, which those are different. Um, I don't know if I mentioned I have obsessive compulsive disorder also known as OCD um, well that's eight so I know I said I had eight well that's all I can think of for now and I think that's good enough yeah um so if I oh and I also have body dysmorphia um, I also have a history with self-harm um, that is associated probably to my borderline and I also have an extensive um, sexual um, trauma history as well as verbal and emotional abuse. So that's just kind of the background that we're working with as far as my mind goes. So the reason I haven't wanted to talk about this is because, A, who the fuck wants to put all of what I just said out there and be like, and that's me. Nobody. 
But I want to talk about this because who knows? Maybe this will be therapeutic for me being able to talk about this. I don't fucking know. Or maybe I will just be able to share my experience and that'll be enough. Or maybe someone else is in the same situation and you won't feel so alone. Uh, so I had my first job when I was like 16 and, uh, I, long story short, I've had, I think it's, uh, 23 jobs, um, 23 jobs in about six years, um, because I've never been able to hold down a job. Like I would either quit because I thought that because I wasn't getting along with coworkers and I usually thought uh, people hated me. So, you know, one might associate that to like borderline symptoms. Um, so I'd always quit because I thought people hated me um, or I would get fired. I've been fired a lot of times. Uh, the longest I held a job was a grace of God uh, and that was for 11 months, but literally, I shit you not, two days after a new manager came in, I was going to hit my year mark. Like my, oh my God, you did it. You held a job for a year. Fuck yes, bitch. I got fired two days into the reign of this new manager because, and I'll never forget these words. So this is verbatim. Even though this was like literally six years ago, um, he said that I was fired for fluctuating mood and performance. Uh, now, this is the time that I was uh, diagnosed with bipolar disorder. This is like around that time when like all of uh, that bipolar happened when I was like in my early 20s. But then like kind of everything else was starting to piece together and really get diagnosed like more recently in the past like three ish years. Um but yeah, I knew I had ADHD. I was diagnosed with that uh, when I was in college. Um, I had an eating disorder since I was like 16. And then like the big one for me was uh, bipolar disorder. Um, so yeah, if you look at all of the symptoms of those eight disorders, that's nine, eight. I don't know how to do numbers of eight <laughs> disorders and how that can play into why someone wouldn't be able to work. Um, I think it's pretty easy to see if you have a general grasp on uh, psychology of why it would be difficult for me to work. So basically, I haven't had a job. Um, I, I haven't had a job in, a, I want to say... I mean, I've lived in New York. I just had my fourth year this year and I had a job for like three months uh, when I first moved to New York before I was going to have top surgery. And so that was just like kind of a filler job. Um, so I was only there for three months. And it, it, of course it was horrible because I would get really bad anxiety. Um, and funnily enough, before I got that job, I got a job at this like fancy place and they fired me on my second day of work. Uh, and I think I would attribute that to just like the anxiety vibes that I was <laughs> putting out there and how I probably seemed really overwhelmed. And um, the thing about me is, I'm gonna keep an eye on time here, so I don't ramble. Uh, the thing about me is, when I have a job, my mood swings are mostly what are the most debilitating for me. Um, borderline, which again is a personality disorder, and bipolar, which is a mood disorder, have a lot of um, symptoms that overlap each other. But one of the main things uh, happen to be mood swings. Um, with borderline, those mood swings can be like just rapid like I'm talking like from one minute to the next bipolar usually those mood swings are thought to be more a little more long term like an episode of mania might last X amount of time and then like you'll fall back down into depression well whatever combine those two together and I can just have very severe mood swings and the way that that manifests and can be extremely cumbersome um, at a 
job and in a professional setting is out of nowhere, I can become extremely irritable, um, rude to customers, um, and just have a very negative attitude. I remember I had a job at a hotel and I got fired on, I didn't even make it to a week. I was maybe there for like five days and they fired me uh, because they said that I was like negative or something like that. And you can tell, looking at me now, you can watch my videos. I'm not, I'm not a negative person. I've been through a lot of things in my life, but I still live my life to the best of the ability that I can and not be a victim of my circumstances. But when I'm in a job that has pressure, my mood swings just become out of control and I turn into just not a very wonderful version of myself through no fault of my own. I can't, I can't help it. Um, but then if we want to get into other disorders and how they affect my ability to function would be simply let's look at PTSD. Um, I have really bad PTSD and for anyone that has that, you know that that just fucks up your shit. Like you know that, that that's a life ruiner right there. Any of these mental illnesses on their own are life ruiners. I would just like to clarify that. So if you're watching this and you have one of these and you're feeling invalidated, if I don't talk about it, I hear you, you're seen, it sucks, but you're still alive. So relish in that motherfucker, like good for you. But specifically PTSD is a life ruiner because that seeps into so many different areas of my life and also some of those symptoms overlap with other stuff. Now the right, main reason that I bring up PTSD is because of uh, the dissociation that I struggle with um, and the panic attacks are the two really big things and also hypervigilance a little bit. But um, I struggle with dissociation a lot, which I have a lot of videos on what dissociation is, but just like a very short definition of what that is, is basically um, losing touch with reality. Um, and usually it's displayed in a person's like body and affect as almost being in a comatose state. So for me, when I have a dissociative episode, I am not able to move. I'm not able to talk. Um, like literally if I'm sitting at a chair and I'm triggered, like I, I usually cannot get up to move to leave the room from whatever is triggering me. Um, in really dissociative episodes, I'm just completely 100% unresponsive to people. Now luckily I have learned skills throughout therapy. I might have, should have said that, should have said that in the beginning, that I'm in therapy two times a week and I have been for the past two years. Like I'm working on my mental health. I am not, again, I'm not a victim to my circumstances. I am working on the conditions that I have because I want to lead a healthy life so that I can get a job someday so that all of these fucking bullshit symptoms that impact my life and ability to make a living stop impacting me. I'm working on it, but unfortunately, there's only so much that someone can carry and there's only so much that you can do at one time. So I just wanted to clarify that like, I'm not just sitting back and letting these things happen to me. I am actively and continually and will continue for the rest of my time on this earth to work to better my mental health and also to inform people of what it's like to struggle with mental illness and give resources and let people know that they're not alone. I'm not the only person who experiences these things. Does everyone have eight mental illnesses? Probably not. Um, but whatever. It is what it is. Sometimes just immense amounts of stress uh, I can dissociate as well. And when a dissociative episode happens, like see you later, goodbye, I am out of commission. Uh, 
So if that were to happen at a job to start dissociating in the middle of a shift or whatever, um, would be a complete catastrophe. Uh, and then along with that, panic attacks are, for me, they're different from everyone, for everyone. People feel them in different places of their body. Uh, a common thing that's said is, you know, sometimes when people have panic attacks, it feels like they're having a heart attack. Um, that's not how I experience my panic attacks. Um, but I have very, very severe panic attacks in which I just... I don't even know. It's just not pretty. Um, I can't breathe. So extreme hyperventilation. I cannot catch my breath. I am usually uh, crying hysterically. Um, usually dissociation then will also slip in like directly after a, uh, an episode. Um, just all out panic. Just panic. That's how my panic attacks look for me. Um, also with ADHD, there's something called hyperfocus, uh, where you can really get involved with a task and everything else like just kind of doesn't really matter. Um, ADHD on its own is a bitch, which I know a lot of people struggle with ADHD. I'm trying to keep my attention on one task for a job. It requires a lot of work. Uh, it requires a lot of patience on the end of other people that are working with me to try and understand like okay like we need to get him back on track type thing and then also just the fact that I really don't like admitting to people is that it is extremely difficult for me to leave the house um, because I'm a bit of a, a recluse and I don't leave the house very often unless like I have to go to therapy or I have to go grocery shopping and even then like I put that off. So um, the difficulty of leaving the house because being on public transport, I have to take the subway because I live in New York. Um, that's extremely triggering to me. I get very irritable because of the sounds of the subway. I get irritable if people are talking, God forbid, if there is a fucking baby crying. Oh my God, horrible. Um, so there's a lot of like external stimuli that is extremely triggering and impactful to my moods. So basically everything is kind of just really touch and go with me. And for the past two years, um, I, I, uh, I've been on disability. I've been on social security disability because the government, um, through all, I think I, I had six different letters from therapists over the span of, uh, of six years of therapy that all wrote letters to um, kind of attest and and uh, say, you know, this is these are Ryland's symptoms and this is how it would impact him having a job. And I am very lucky because if anyone comments on this video, uh, they might say this. I, I'm very lucky that I got approved right away on my first try because I know a lot of people um, might never get disability or the common thing is is that you get denied on your first try and then you have to try again Luckily enough for me. I was approved um, on my first try um, But that's something that I'm really ashamed of and Now we are 20 minutes in and I doubt anyone is watching anymore But you should have stuck in because now I'll I'll get emotional because that's what we all love to see right um, well, the truth of the matter is, is I am, whew, I'm embarrassed to tell people that I am on disability. Um, I'm embarrassed to tell people that I'm not able to work because even people within my immediate family do not understand the degree that my illnesses affect me and 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 push for me to get a job because unfortunately the reality is is that I do live in New York City I have my own apartment and I have to find ways to pay my exorbitant rent and to be able to just survive as a human being and you know people are always like well how do you pay for your rent how do you do that 
I get a minuscule amount of money from the government and then I try to find other ways to bring in money. I'm ashamed when people say, oh, what do you do for a job? Well, I am an actor, like legit, I am a professional actor, but uh, if I'm not in a show that I'm not making any money and I don't like admitting to people that I'm on social security disability. So the fact that I'm saying this now online uh, is more than most people in my actual life will know. Um, and for some reason it just brings a lot of shame and stigma to me because the people that uh, perpetuate stigma around mental health um, can have whatever opinions. I, I, I don't even know, maybe that I'm lazy. I have no idea. I don't know what people would say to uh, invalidate my experiences and, and how it is um, impossible for me to have gainful employment. Um, because I think I'm afraid of that. I think I'm afraid of people judging me on that and just not understanding how bad it is. And because of that, yeah, I'm embarrassed. I cannot tell you how much I wish I could just have a regular job and be like everybody else. I, oh, I'm an actor, so a lot of my friends are servers and like, waiters and waitresses and I was in the service industry for like eight years I was a really great server but you know my illness would affect me and that sometimes I would forget to put in orders or you know whatever there's a lot of things that could happen but I just wish that I could have a regular job I wish that I could just fucking work at fucking H&M and hold a regular job but unfortunately I know that that job wouldn't last for very long and it is not frankly it's not recommended by my therapist like she's like no let's let's not get a job right now but I just wish I could be normal and this isn't a self-pity thing this is an explanation that yes while I'm lucky that the government gives me all of the money that I get I'm gonna tell you it is way under a thousand dollars so I'm literally getting like no money um, I wish I could just have a regular job and lead a normal life in order to make money. Living a normal life in other situations of like not having my symptoms affect me at all, like whatever, that's a whole different thing. But I just wish I could make money and be able to support myself. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I can't. Uh, you know, that, that's been established by many doctors and many clinicians that I'm working with at this moment. And it's just a reality that I have to accept. Um, but it sucks and talking about it is hard. As you can see, um, it's vulnerable, but I don't know. I don't know why the reason I'm sharing this is Maybe just to speak my truth, I guess. And maybe also say that everything isn't always as it seems. You know, on, uh, on the outside, I am a really happy person. And then deep down, I struggle with a lot of stuff. And this is one of the main ways that it literally impacts my life. Um being able to support myself financially. So, for all of the naysayers out there that say mental illness is bullshit or whatever, just, you know, smile, be happy, whatever, it's not that simple. It's much more complicated than that. So, thanks for watching this video, if you're still with me. Um, this was a doozy. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to say is I guess I just, uh, in the end, uh, wanted to speak my truth and, and talk about something that I felt a lot of shame about over the last couple years. So I hope you guys have a good day.